Okay. So my next topic, I've got uh, just a few slides. Uh, and just to preface this, the reason uh, that, so both of these presentations that you're presenting with are presentations in which your data disagrees with someone else's data. Would you agree with that statement? Uh, for the first one, I'm not sure it dis disagrees with the second one. All right. We'll see. At least by my reading of the okay, literature. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> it's Todd. <laughs> go ahead. So it's about meconium plug syndrome. Uh, and I think it's important to realize this is not meconium ileus. So we're not talking about meconium ileus. We're talking about meconium plug syndrome. And this is the newborn uh, presenting with a transient large bowel obstruction uh, that is relieved by the passage of meconium plugs, sometimes with a, a contrast in them, sometimes with uh, some rectal stimulation, uh, but it's not meconium ileus. And I did not actually know this, Todd, but this uh, syndrome was first described by uh, William Clatworthy uh, at mm. Ohio State. Wow. I did not know this, in 1956, and so I've shown the, the title uh, page of his uh, uh, report. Uh, and they described nine uh, children. Uh, one of the nine children uh, uh, developed uh, or was found to have Hirschsprung's disease. Um, so our paper was um, 2008, and this was a retrospective study uh, and we looked uh, over a 13-year period uh, at newborns who were documented to have meconium plug syndrome from 1994 to 2007, and there were 77 babies. And 10 of those babies were subsequently found to have Hirschsprung's disease, uh, which was this, uh, about the same as the Clatworthy paper. No baby had cystic fibrosis uh, a lot of early literature seemed to suggest, uh, well, not necessarily a lot, but some early literature seemed to suggest an association with cystic fibrosis and meconium plug syndrome. And our conclusion with, uh, was that babies with meconium plug syndrome and abnormal stooling pattern should undergo a rectal biopsy. A recent paper uh, that uh, just came out um, was from... Um, uh, Dr. Uh, Louts uh, and colleagues at uh, Northwestern. Uh, and this uh, came out this year in the Journal of Pediatric Surgery, and it was a, fi a FIS database uh, study. So FIS is the Public Health uh, Information System, and that's really a database registry for hospitals participating in the Children's Hospital uh, Association. Uh, in the United States, and there are about 50 hospitals within the Children's Hospital Association. So this is a, a FIS database study of, from 50 children's hospitals in the U.S. It was over a two-year period, uh, and they found 373 newborns. Um, 43 of them had uh, Hirschsprung's disease on an early rectal biopsy, uh, and uh, a total of 57 or 15 percent were ultimately found to have Hirschsprung's disease. And so at least from my reading, Todd, the, in these three papers, the incidence of Hirschsprung's disease is somewhere between 11 and 15 percent. So that's why I'm not sure I, I think that there's a lot of difference in these, um, these papers. Okay. So that's because we had, okay. So we're all in agreement then. Do you have any comments that were that were? Yeah, that there are some learned? limitations in this paper, and I mean the retrospective database study, and that they didn't have uh, a good code to identify the rectal biopsies. So they used a whole bunch of different uh, CPT codes and procedures and diagnostic codes that may make it a little murky for analysis, but. Okay. Yeah, I think that uh, database studies in general suffer from a lot of the, you know, same problems, and this was uh, no exception. But a, but it comes out to a similar, a relatively similar um, yeah. instance of Hirschsprung's disease. So, uh, Mac, do you biopsy all of your meconium plugs? I was about to ask you a question. Okay, go ahead. Is the controversy that a 10 to 15% incidence means warrants that all these kids get a, a biopsy, right? That's, right. that's, that's the yeah. How do we interpret the data? Yeah, yeah. Right. 
So, so what do you do? I've got, done both. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What, what do you do? So we uh, generally, if there's, if there's abnormal stooling pattern, then we'll do the biopsy. So, but we do not biopsy every, not, there are not that many, but every patient with Macon, every baby with meconium plug syndrome. Did any of the babies, the question is that 10 to 15% that you don't biopsy that come back to find out, has it ever, you know, have they gotten worsening enterocolitis because you wait, you know, in other words, can you afford to wait and see? Or is it, are those patients getting sick and it's worth doing it? And even though 85% of them are going to come back negative. Liz, what do you do? Uh, we biopsy. You biopsy all of them? Yes, yeah. sir. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, out in the audience here, do you, the question is, do you, do you routinely biopsy babies that have meconium plug? And Von Allman says yes. Yeah. Will Ken says no. Selective. Selective. Okay, Mira's agreeing with Dan. <laughs> Selective. Okay. Selective based on how they're doing clinically. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right.